I'm going to start is I want to cheer the force of uh, grass and debate point. I thank you very much indeed for that inspirational talk. There isn't time for questions at this point, so we're going to crack right on uh, with uh, Rhys Williams. And Rhys is going to talk about grass into milk. Uh, now, I guess you're wondering why we're talking about milk here at Cumbers on Beef, but fundamentally it's about production, isn't it? So, um, whether you choose to the cows or turn them into beef, it's all about production from grass. So, Rhys has got uh, one of the best stories in agriculture, so I'm told, from North Wales. He's a first generation dairy farmer, started with nothing, now he owns his own farm and he share milks in another, so there's some lessons in there about um, how we can get new entrants into the business, I would suggest. He's a passionate Welshman, he's speaking today in his second language. Now I heard him on the phone this morning um, over coffee and he was giving away partly in Welsh, partly in English, I, I couldn't follow even half of it, so uh, phenomenal skill there. His favourite hobby is trying to convince any cattle or sheep farmer to convert to dairy production, but he's promised not to do that today. So, Reese, uh, you've got 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, when, uh, when, when Michael asked me to come up here to, to speak, um, you know, I, I, I jumped at the chance because um, I do feel the, the responsible for him. <laughs> for this grass day. Um, I, I, I was quite fortunate we did enough field together in 2010 and um, you just couldn't believe what could be done by, by grass and things and um, it's just fantastic to see the work he's doing up here. It's my, myself, um, my wife Kelly and our four young kids. Um, I am uh, 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 first generation um, farmer um, and 10 years ago we didn't have any cows, um, didn't have a farm, didn't have any kids either. So things um, things have developed you know, over the last 10 years we've been busy. I know where the, where the cows come from, where the kids are, you know, some story, anyway. <laughs> we live on the Peninsula which is uh, located um, in North Wales, right at the end of the Arms in the Anglesey. Um, fantastic place for, for growing grass, a um, bit of a microclimate. Um, quite unique really because we can actually grow grass, you know, 365 days of the year. Um, a bit of background myself quickly. Uh, brought up, I was brought up in, you know, in a strong agriculture community. Um, which had a, quite a large influence on me. Uh, I went to the Welsh Agriculture College in Upper Street. Um, did learn lots about agriculture at that time, but did learn lots about life. Um, and I think my lucky break in life and my light bulb moment was um, spending time in New Zealand when I was young. Um, I spent six months over there when I was 21. Worked for a, a, a relief farm services in, 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 in the Waikato called Marvin Farm Services um, and you know just it, it just blew me away how simple the kiwis were farming and how simply you could you know, turn grass into cash basically um, for in the last probably 10, 10 12 years we've, we've developed our own farming enterprise um, myself and Kelly have a company called Iron KW Limited um, today we have two, two milking units, um, 750 cows on, on those units, um, one farm owned that we bought two years ago and another one a uh, share farm, um, specialising in you know, spring block calving, um, low cost milk production and basically just getting you know, everything we can out of grass, you know, turning you know, fully out utilizing that because you know, in the UK here, especially on the West, you know, one thing we can do very well is grow a lot of grass. You know, we can grow grasses, you know, better than any other country in the world. This is a, our own farm um, on, the, on the peninsula, it's called Tragan, um, 80 hectares, about 300 cows on there. Um, there's 190 young stock. Uh, in the system, but they're not, not on, the, on, on the farm here. It's our, you know, basically, it was my dream, you know, probably 20 years ago, you know, to have my, you know, our own farm, a family unit. 
um, it's very heavily geared, um, you know, very heavily financed. Um, the only thing that are actually debt free are the cows on there. Um, and the biggest thing for myself was setting up a system that I've actually got a, a farm theme for itself. Um, and that's why probably, you know, we, we very heavily stocked on there. We stock at, at around 4.4 4 cows to hectare. We, we can grow 16 tons of grass on there. Um, inputs probably, we, we are, I do use quite a lot of nitrogen, 300 kilos of nitrogen. But, you know, it's good, you know, just going forward, you know, it's, it's, especially with any youngsters in, in the room, you know, with a dream, you know, it is possible to go out there and buy your own farm and make it pay for yourself. This is a, the second unit that we share milk. Um, this is, whereas the other farms down on the peninsula, where we get in the microclimate, we can grow 16 tons of grass. Uh, the the, the low-lying ground is nearly on sea level. This farm is up in the hills, it's a thousand feet above sea level. We get 950 mil on the peninsula and we get about uh, 1.8 meters of rain up here, a huge difference, double amount of rain. But we still, we can grow 14 tons of grass up there. Um, the shoulders is a bit, uh, bit more, there's got to be more risk management involved, but the way it works, we supply the cows, we've got 450 cows on there. The land what supplies the farm and the infrastructure. We have a limited company that, that runs like a, the 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 day to day operating company where all the costs go in there and, and you know all the bills get paid off for that. Basically at the end of the, at the end of the day, at the end of the year we just split the whatever's left in the in the, in that bank account half half. You know, the landlord gets half of it as his rent, I get half of it as you know the, the profit. Um, we've got three three guys on there full time. The manager on there uh, owns ten percent of the cows. You know, and, and you know a huge thing for, for myself to actually you know helping youngsters into the industry and getting up them up the ladder. You know, and I feel every you know they they need to feel ownership quite quite. You know, early on in, the, in, in their careers, um, and you know, the, I spend probably half a day a week on there. Um, I'm always at the end of the, of, of the phone. But I'm, I'm also quite happy to leave that farm probably for two months without eating anything. I know everything's going okay. Anyway, but just, just going going into say the practicalities of of grazing and setting up grazing farms. Um, this. This is our farm at home, um, and it's split up into 24 paddocks. Um, you'll notice on that they're not the same size, and actually it doesn't really matter when you, you, you know, with, with milking cows, because the round is different, the round length it can be different at any time of the year. So in spring, we'd we'll be splitting up the paddocks with, you know, um, reels, and at this time of the year, we actually they're just going into paddocks and coming out when we finish which would be a maximum of, of three milkings. Um, but th this is a huge piece of kit for us, you know, that, you know, getting a good map, you know, in exactly the size of your paddocks. You know, I can give that to anybody that comes on the farm, you know, a, a contractor, anybody, and, and they know exactly where they're going. Um, infrastructure, you know, we've, with, with a daily job, we've got to have you know good tracks, you know good access to paddocks because they're walking in and out of paddocks twice a day, um, and in, especially in wet weather, we've got to have multi-access off the tracks to to, the, to to all the paddocks really. Um, I, you know I I can't leave the tracks as you know like a shed basically. You know it's, it's essential. You know I can't you know I can't farm without these tracks. Um, same with you know the, the water. There's a, there's a there's a big uh, water trough in every paddock, um, 50 mil pipe going out, branching off to 32 mil. Um, huge flow. Um, so that's you know it's essential when you when you're doing the job, just getting the basics basics right. 
and um, not spending a lot of money, but what money you do spend, you spend it wisely. Um, this is the most important job of the week um, on, on our farms. Um, every Monday we go out and we measure grass. Um, we are, you know, I'm, I'm going back to you know, grasses. You know, I'm a grass farmer. And I wouldn't class myself as a dairy farmer you know, I'm a grass farmer. I have this grass basically. So every week it's very important for me to know how much we're growing um, so we, we can plan ahead. So that's it, every, every paddock, that's a, the quadrants we have there for the clippers. Um, so we, we actually mesh, we measure the grass, estimate the dry matter, and then we, we know exactly how many kilos of dry matter there is in that paddock. Um, I've been doing this for 10 years, you know, more, and we've got a lot of information and you know, the decisions you can make on this going forward is, is immense. And then after after we've, we've, we've done the daily walk of it every Monday, we get <coughs> into a, a computer program which actually throws out what we call the grazing wedge. Um, and without you know I'd be lost without this. You know, this and basically you'll see on the top there is you know it'll it tells, it tells exactly the, the farm cover, uh, total life, life of a few minutes, uh, the demand, the, the current demand on this farm is four and a half tons a day of, of, of grass. Um, total demand per hectare is 66 kilos a day. Um, so there's a lot of data there that's, you know, that we use. Um, and it lists the paddocks, you know, in the order of the, the highest cover and what's in there. Um, and it tells, it tells us exactly how many days of, of you know, the, the, those paddocks will last for the cows. The top one's going to last a day, second one a day and a half, another day. And it's, you know, it's pretty accurate and, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic guide. And then, we, you know, every paddock, you know, like this is just last year's data, and we measured uh, here. We measured every paddock 42 times, and it tells you that the average on this farm last year was, was just under 13 tons of, of grass grown, which last year was a pretty average year for us, uh, grass, grass wise. Um, a very good year for utilising grass, but a, a very poor, you know, quantity year. But you get this data for two, three, four, five years. And you, you, you quickly pick up the paddocks that are not performing. You, you, you see, like paddock number six there, that's a terrible paddock. You know, and immediately you rectify it, and probably the first things you look for is the, is the indices, the P's, the K's, the pH, drainage, um, rectifying them. And probably the last thing I, I do is actually go in there and reseed, um, generally reseed on 7% of the farm every year. Um, I'm not a big believer in creating. You know, creating costs. You know, uh, I run the pretty lean system, um, and you know, everything's driven. You know, I, I won't spend money unless I have to. And this is this year's again. So we we are actually going. We've been five tons up to up to you know the end of end of May this year. And, you know, it's just a phenomenal year. Um, paddock 6 has been taken out already, so that's been reseeded. So grazing management basically, you know, you've got to know the cost of, it, of, of your production. Identifying areas where, you know, where, where you're wasting money and rectifying that. You've got to understand, your, your, you know, your whole business and the strength and weaknesses of it. And, you know, it's just, I think that the biggest one is knowing the cost of your, of your production. For myself, you know, in my business, you know, I've got three KPIs basically. Uh, the biggest one is the return on capital employed. Um, that's the, you know the, the key driver. Um, and then I link, you know, the profit. Per, I'm, I'm not a big believer in profit per cow or profit per hectare, but it does, you know, there's a link there. Um, and then the biggest one again is profit per ton of grass grown. And you know we. we We'd be in the region of, we'd be making 200, 250 pounds per ton of, you know, <coughs> of um, 
and that's the, you know that's a, that's one key thing that people have got to focus on is you know the return on the capital employed that have gone to the feet and then the, the profit of, you know the return of, you know of, of cash flow. Crazy management again, you know, a lot of it comes down to, you know, mindset, you know, and, you know, acquiring the right skill set, you know. It's quite simple, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a simple kind of guy, I wouldn't be doing it unless it was simple. Um, but you want, you, you've got to be quite dedicated and you've got to stay in it for the long term. Those two things together, plus, you know, you'll get the performance and you will get success at the end of the day. Thank you very much.